Have you ever wanted to start your own podcast? I record and publish podcasts on a platform called Spotify for Podcasters, and I absolutely love it. Essentially, you can upload from your phone or computer, and it distributes to every platform that plays podcasts. They support video podcasts, and you can make money on the platform with ads or even podcast subscriptions, something that has made my life so much easier as a podcaster. So if you're interested, I highly recommend you give it a try. You can download the Spotify for Podcast app or go to spotify.com slash podcasters to get started on your podcast today. Welcome to the ChatGPT Podcast. I'm your host, Jaden Schaefer. Each episode, we dive into the latest developments in the exciting field of artificial intelligence, exploring its applications and potential impacts on our daily lives. If you've been following the podcast for a while, you'll know that over the last six months, I've been working on a stealth AI startup. Of the hundreds of projects I've covered, this is the one that I believe has the greatest potential. So today I'm excited to announce AI Box. AI Box is a no-code AI app building platform paired with the App Store for AI that lets you monetize your AI tools. The platform lets you build apps by linking together AI models like ChatGPT, MidJourney, and Eleven Labs eventually we will integrate with software like Gmail, Trello, and Salesforce, so you can use AI to automate every function in your organization. To get notified when we launch and be one of the first to build on the platform, you can join the waitlist at AIbox.ai. The link is in the show notes. We are currently raising a seed round of funding. If you're an investor that is focused on disruptive tech, I'd love to tell you more about the platform. You can reach out to me at jaden at AIbox.ai. I'll leave that email in the show notes. Some shocking news has recently come out about humans and our ability to detect if something was written by AI or not. And along this lines, there's also been two pieces of legislation that have just, one is being proposed in the US and one is just being uh, broken or is coming out in the uh, EU that directly, I think, impacts and is kind of addressing this one specific issue. Now, I, for one, if you listen to my podcast, I will say I am not typically super pro um, pro kind of regulating AI right now. I definitely think it's an area that needs to be looked at. I definitely think we need to be working on it. I would just worry that if we jumped the gun too quick, it could slow us down. So today on the podcast, um, I am going to talk about some regulation that I think actually can be helpful. I think it has some precedent and I think it has some value and is a good first step. And we're going to talk about why um, this is happening. So I think the first thing to bring up is the fact that a recent report just came out. If you remember, um, I think back in April, there was a viral game on Twitter called Human or Not. And essentially, it was uh, one of the largest scale Turing tests to date. And it was just essentially assessing people's ability to determine between humans and AI bots. Essentially, in the game, you would have a two-minute conversation with a bot or a human, and then you'd have to guess if it was human or not. And this resulted in over a million conversations, and uh, you know people's guesses were all analyzed. And the results showed that only 60% of participants correctly identified AI bots. So participants very often... Uh, relied on, I would say, some false assumptions there. You know, they'd expect the bots to avoid um, typos or grammar mistakes or slang, despite, you know, bots being specifically trained to incorporate these features. So I think that's one way that, you you know, they got them. But like, the other thing I would say is this was also, you know, 60% of uh, participants got this right. So 40% got it wrong. Um, But I think what's important is this was literally people being given like, a test and knowing that this was a test on AI or not. And I think that that's one thing and you'd actually get a lot higher. But if you just come across AI content out in the wild on the internet, an image or text, I think the uh, likelihood of you getting that right would be much, much lower. Now, I bring all of that up because some recent regulation that was proposed in the US essentially proposes having, um, and this is coming from a congressman, Richie Torres from New York, Democrat, Um, And he is planning on introducing an AI Disclosure Act uh, to address the risks of generative artificial intelligence. And essentially, his proposed legislation mandates that all outputs generated by AI carry a disclosure statement saying, disclaimer, this is an output that has been generated by artificial intelligence. Now, I think that this isn't very far off as far as precedent goes. Um, His idea here is that the FTC, Federal Trade Commission, is going to be entrusted with the responsibility of enforcing this requirement. And... Um, You know, I know I'm not a huge proponent of regulation and AI right now. I think this one actually is not bad. Um, And the reason I say that is I believe there's precedent, you know, coming from a marketing background. There was a lot of issues back in the past with um, influencers 
and they would be promoting a product or talking about something they loved and in reality it was an ad but they wouldn't tell you that and so it kind of felt like a conflict of interest where they were just you know maybe tricking people into using a product who knows if they used it or not um and so eventually that, that came out with the rule where uh, you had to do hashtag ad or you had to pretty much tell people that something was a sponsored post and you know you see this in youtube it's not like that clunky but an influencer will be like hey i love this product i would have you know, talked about it anyways, but today it's also a sponsor on the thing. So I don't know if they would have actually talked about it anyways, but you know, I do appreciate the honesty and messing around with the FTC Federal Trade Commission is not something a lot of people want to do. So I think that this, you know, putting it in the same kind of ballpark uh, here for, you know, hashtag sponsored ad or hashtag AI generated is going to be, um, is going to be a good move. I think, you know, if you just want people to know, if you don't want to worry about uh, viral content going viral where people don't know it's written by AI. I've already seen like on Twitter in the Twitter comments um, when people are arguing one way or another politically uh, it's very prone for people to like start showing proof of like a person being bad and they're showing like all these AI generated images and people are arguing about them some people are being tricked by them I just think it's uh, a obviously ridiculous like why does that need to exist but b um, you know it is some people are using it deceitfully intentionally um, and so I do think you know making it legal that you have to uh, say this was generated by AI because essentially you know, this isn't like a meme it's not like a uh, you know a piece of artwork like people are using these to mislead people there's images that are meant to look literal or real and likewise I think it's just good to have a disclaimer on content uh, written that's generated by AI because, um, you know, if you read an article and it's generated by AI, you don't know if that thing's been fact-checked by humans. Maybe they have a note at the top, this was generated by AI and has been fact-checked by our experts at Healthline, blah, 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 or whatever company decides to do this. I think even that would be great. I personally wouldn't hold it against the company because I, I use AI generation for different businesses and different things I use. So obviously the tool is going to uh, proliferate into everything, but I think people do want full disclosure and people do want uh, that transparency. I think that's going to help them to make informed decisions and know how trustworthy content is. And so, yeah, personally, I'm actually all for this proposal. I think that this was a good move um, from Torres and his office. Now, do I have I read the bill? No. Did they slip sneaky things in there that might be bad or like, you know, on the face, this might look like a good idea, but there's other stuff in there? Yes. I mean, that's politics. I see that all the time from Republicans, Democrats, both sides where they'll propose a bill and there's, you know, this is the idea of the bill, but there's sneaky stuff in there. So I can't say I, I specifically, I guess, endorse this bill without reading it. But conceptually, I think that is a good concept. And so it's left to be said um, how that gets litigated and if that gets passed. But conceptually, I think that's a great idea. And um, it is interesting to say uh, that this is also a battle that is currently happening. So this is proposing the US, but also in the EU. Um, Google and Facebook are recently have been urged by the EU to label all of their AI generated content. You know, Google already said that they were going to be doing this um, on Google images. And so I think that this is something that uh, is going to be interesting to see. Apparently, the uh, the head of the EU, she met with Google Sundar Pichi, the CEO, um, a while ago, and she asked him if they had technology to detect fake news. And he said, yes, uh, but we're developing our technologies further. Um, I think in the EU, it would appear from the articles I've read that a lot of this debate revolves around Russia and essentially them wanting to label Russian mission misinformation campaigns. Um, they're worried about with the Russian invasion of the Ukraine that Russia is going to be pumping out a bunch of different, um, you know, fake news. I mean, it, you could understand, right? Russia pumps out, let's say, some images of Ukrainians doing some horrific war crimes. And, you know, all of a sudden people are saying, oh, man, Ukraine's bad. Or, I mean, this could go either way. Ukraine could be doing it against Russia. Anyone could be doing it against anyone. Um, and it's bad in all ways. But in any case, um, I think that this is the big issue that they're currently kind of centering it around there. Um, I guess they're kind of in the middle of a they're in the middle of a, of a big war. And so this is kind of top of their mind for them there. Um, and I, I do think it's interesting, though, because they're, they're talking to, uh, you know, the CEO of Google and he says they have tools. Now, we all know there are a handful of tools. I wouldn't put it past Google to have more powerful or more advanced tools because it really kind of undermines their search if everyone can use AI to rank things that are not true or written by AI. So I would hope Google has some good advanced tools for detecting AI and making um, you know algorithmic adjustments based off of that. But at the same time, I am a little skeptical just because a lot of the AI detection tools I've used um, are known for 
uh, putting forth false positives, and a lot of them are not super accurate. Like personally, um, when I want something written by AI and I don't want it to be detected, and the reason I don't want it to be detected is because I just don't want Google to algorithmically derank an article. I'm you know trying to write it for SEO purposes. Is I will grab that, I will throw it through Quillbot, and um, I will have Quillbot. Uh, rewrite it or whatever and there's gonna be a number of tools so like if all of a sudden I saw that all of the articles on my website started getting delisted from Google search results are written by AI um, I would just go find a new tool I would just respin them what's the difference between using that and having a, a actual human go and rewrite them or respin them I mean okay obviously I understand the differences but I mean from Google's perspective so I think it's going to be a cat and mouse game forever. Google says they have tools that detect AI, um, but I, I don't know how in-depth those go. Uh, for example, I recently discovered, and this is a great ChatGPT use case, but I recently discovered that you can get ChatGPT, you can say, hey, act as a copywriter, and copy my style of writing exactly. Um, you can feed it a few articles that you've written, and then you say, write an article on XYZ topic, um, and it can write an article in your style. So... I think that, you know, ChatGPT says they have some things embedded in there to help you detect that that was written by AI. I think the way that they like put words together, they have algorithms so that you can detect that. But uh, what's to say I go train my own model or there is a anti-AI detection model that people have created um, that you could train off of your own writing style. So I think it gets kind of gray lines and blurry there um, where like a an article was written about a certain topic by AI, but it was copying my style and maybe I gave it like uh, five content pieces or sources or bits of information to write about. And it's like, it's it's tricky. I'll definitely say it's tricky and detecting this is going to be really hard. It's going to be cat and mouse forever. So I don't know if this is really going to be something that can be very easily enforced. And with the false positives, right? Like if you go and say, hey, this was <laughs> all of a sudden the FTC starts, um, you know, finding the Wall Street Journal because they say your article is written by AI and they're because it got a false positive on something. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be a little bit hairy. And I think at the end of the day, it's kind of like um, influencers on YouTube can go and shout out a product and talk about it and pretend it's not sponsored and probably nothing will happen. But on the off chance that someone finds out or there's some controversy around it, they find out it was a sponsored post and they didn't uh, disclose it they would obviously get fined. I are, are influencers really getting fined in reality? I highly doubt. I haven't seen any big cases. I highly doubt this is a very common thing. I think it's going to be the same with AI where it's kind of a self-regulated thing. Like you should be a good person and denote if something was created by AI. Uh, enforcing it will be pretty tricky. So it's going to be interesting to see if there is actually any, um, any kind of credence to this, if there's going to be actually application and if this is actually... Uh, taken or implemented but conceptually i think it's a good idea um because transparency in my opinion is always the best option so this is gonna be an interesting area to continue to follow if you are looking for an innovative and creative community of people using chat gpt you need to join our chat gpt creators community i'll drop a link in the description to this podcast we'd love to see you there where we share tips and tricks of what is working in chat gpt it's a lot easier than a podcast as you can see screenshots you can share and comment on things that are currently working so if this sounds interesting to you, check out the link in the comment. We'd love to have you in the community. You've been listening to the ChatGPT podcast. Make sure to rate us wherever you listen to your podcasts and have a fantastic week.